Hello and welcome to Small Business 21st Century and today's segment of Build Your Difference. I'm your host, Pierre Walters, and today's guest is a nurse, veteran, entrepreneur, and visionary who has dedicated his life to advocacy. He has two master's degrees, a master's in nursing of science with a tract in leadership and management, and a health and a master's in health education and promotion from Walden University. He's the founder and current executive director of the Urban Kidney Alliance Incorporated, a 50123, a grassroots nonprofit organization devoted to kidney disease advocacy, awareness, and promotion. His many accomplishments include the Presidential Volunteerism Service Award honoree and recipient of the AAKP National Social Media Education and Advocacy Award. He is also the author of two books, How to Survive Outpatient's Hemodialysis, A Guide for Patients with Kidney Failure, and his most current and critical work, The Dialysis Patient's Handbook of Information. He is also known on social media as Steve the Kidney Nurse. So today, we're honored to welcome author Steve L. Belcher to the show. Welcome, Steve. It is such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Hi, Pierre. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Steve, I am so just so excited to have you here to, 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 to talk to you face to face about the incredible work that you are doing. I mean, you are nationally acclaimed internationally acclaimed and you, the advocacy that you have brought uh, has really changed lives bringing accessibility and information to people who who are are patients or who are dealing with kidney dialysis and and for some are you know really upset with either the lack of information or misinformation and you have just really changed the game by making this accessible and uh, and uh, and informative to just so many people, I want to ask you, you know, in light of the in incredible achievements uh, in your career, how did you get started in the medical field? Man, that's a long story, but to just shorten it up, when I got out of the military back in 1985, at the time I was married. Me and my wife at the time moved to Austin, Texas. I had just got out of the military in Killeen, Texas. And I was doing odd jobs at the time. And I just happened to see this commercial for a trade school for a medical assistant. Had no medical experience whatsoever. So I said, let me try this. So I started and I was able to get acclimated to it, learn it. And three months in, I went to the job placement uh, person and asked them if they knew where I can find work so I can get on the job training. And at that time, that's when she gave me the number to a lady I'll never forget named Gladys Houston that worked at the Austin Diagnostic Clinic. And that's where I learned dialysis in Austin, Austin Diagnostic Clinic. Amazing. And so from there, I just matriculated through the profession, um, was a dialysis technician for 10 years. And then a patient, you know, after we put on patients, we, we were able to sit down back in the 90s and discuss what patient like kidney disease mm -hmm. education and dialysis education. And I never forget this patient named Dr. Wilbur who uh, used to work for the, um, for the, uh, uh, the um, I can't think, United Nations, I'm United sorry, the Nations. United okay. Nations in New York, okay. PhD. And he had two daughters that were doctors. And he said, Steve, you ought to go back to school for nursing. And I never thought about that at the time. I was thinking about computers or something else. And it wasn't until I had a situation with a nurse 
and I went to her to discuss something about a patient. And she told me, whenever you become a nurse, then you can make that decision. But right now, I want you to do it this way. Right there was the uh, match that lit the fire for me to go back to nursing school. So, uh, so in that moment, you thought, you know what? There is a better way. And in order for me to make sure that my voice is heard and that I can actually make a change, I'm going to need to go back to nursing school and I'm going to need to get qualified. And then you did. And you did just that. And now, however many years later, you are an, an author twice over. And your book, The Dialysis Patient's Handbook of Information, this is your second book. I want to yes. know, how did you begin your journey as an author? Well, that's, it's kind of complicated, but it's not. So I got injured on the job back in 2018, and that rendered me from really working full time as a charge nurse. I hurt my back, slipped and fell on the floor. Mm. And so during that recovery time, I was doing podcasts and putting free information out there. And I would never really get a lot of people to come to my live to get the information, being that this disease impacts hundreds of thousands of people. I couldn't get more than 10 people to come to my podcast and watch the lives. And so I decided to put this information in a book and I sat down and most of the podcasts and the information that I talked about are in the book, in the first book as well. Mm -hmm. And I decided if I can't get, reach people through podcasts, maybe I could reach them through literacy. So let me put this information down in manuscript form and get it out there. Got it. And, and Steve, Steve, I just want to say that is, you know, that, that was very brave of you because I can tell you right now that so many of us have it within us to write a book uh, because either there's a need or there's a story we have that we want to tell, but also so many of us are afraid of the process or are, are afraid that maybe whatever it is we have to say, people won't value. But listen, I want to talk more about your journey. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we're going to learn more with Steve L. Belcher. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented, mostly by making changes in your diet, controlling your weight, and of course, by not smoking. Visit prevent50.org and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, and more. And welcome back. You're watching Small Business 21st Century in today's segment of Build Your Difference with my special guest, author Steve L. Belcher, the founder and executive director of the Urban Kidney Alliance Incorporated. Now, prior to the break, we were discussing how Steve began his journey as an author twice over. And, and as we continue this discussion, I want to learn more about why the, the, the need to get correct information out there ha, has sparked a fire within Steve. Steve, why, why are you so passionate about making sure that correct information is out there in the in the community of people who are dealing with kidney disease? Well, Pierre, during my 40 year span working in dialysis, I can't tell you the disparity that I've seen, especially among uh, black and brown people. I mean, kidney disease affects every uh, race. Let's make that clear. However, during my career, I've seen more minorities deal with this situation than any other race. And when you find out a lot of the reasons how they began dialysis, they didn't know they had kidney disease or um, they found out at the last minute or they went to the doctors and found out that they were far advanced 
than they thought they were. Whatever the reason was, they weren't prepared when they got the disease and started dialysis. And so after seeing this, people not knowing they had uh, diabetes or hypertension or weren't educated that they can uh, stop the progression, then I decided that I needed to do something to get the word out there. And this is a true story. When I was working before I got injured, maybe three, three weeks before I had my accident at work, I had an epiphany. And something just told me, Steve, you need to reach more people than the people inside this dialysis clinic. Now, this was a 29-chair facility. And the same way I give out information on social media, like TikTok Live or wherever, that's how I was doing inside the clinic as I made my rounds talking to each patient. I gave each patient the same amount of time I gave the last one. So the, the unit and the management would get mad at me because they only want you to take 60 minutes to do your assessment. And if someone had a question, I didn't rush through it. I stayed there and answered and make sure they understood. But something told me I needed to expand that knowledge beyond the walls of that facility. And then three weeks later on Friday, July the 13th, that's when I had my career changing accident. Wow. Steve, is it, would it be okay for you to let me know more about that accident? What was it that happened that caused your career to, to, to totally change? So this particular morning, Friday morning, July the 13th, was like no other um, morning. I mean, it was the same routine. I just happened to be talking with the nurse um, at the medicine room. We were just talking. And so I had to go to the bathroom. And the bathroom was right across from the med station or the med room. So I had a back brace on, I had on scrubs. And I rushed over and tried to open the door and take the back brace off and get to my drawstring on my scrub. And I was going into the locker room and I didn't see that there was acid that they used for dialysis that had leaked from a pipe in the walls and came up under the floor in the locker room and I slipped on that, rushed into the bathroom and fell on my back. I had on nursing shoes that had on slippery type uh, soles, they were called dance goals. And I slipped and I couldn't catch myself and I fell on my, my back. Oh my and goodness. that was that. Oh my goodness, so you fell on your back in acid. Well, it wasn't a lot of acid, but it was enough acid to cause me to slip on the floor and fall. And this is not the type of acid that is going to burn your skin. This is like acid that comes in a solution okay. of other chemicals and composition that okay. uh, electrolytes that are um, th that are um, compatible with your inside um, electrolytes. Understood, okay, and I thank you for that clarity because let me tell you, I needed that clarity. Uh, so so, it, it, was, so it, did, it, was, it wasn't acid that would burn your skin, but nonetheless, it was a solution that was particularly slippery that was not supposed to be where it was. You, you had no reason to think that that was there. You slipped. Exactly. You, you, you were injured that changed your career and changed your trajectory. And, and now you are how we see you today, Steve the kidney nurse. I mean, I mean this, what an incredible origin story. I, Steve, I wanna know, we have just a minute before we have to go to break, but I wanna know, 
what's one or two of the main causes of kidney disease? And if you could let me know in about 30 seconds, what's one or two of the main causes? So the two main causes of kidney disease failure are diabetes and hypertension. They are the two leading causes. And this is what's causing this um, explosion of renal treatment centers you see throughout urban communities across the United States. I see. Wow. And you're right. It absolutely is an explosion. I mean, it seems like they're just, they're popping up in every community, it seems, or at least every, you know, more frequent, more frequently than uh, I think we're accustomed to seeing, and and oh, so absolutely, and, and and I think this is a very interesting uh, wake up call for, you know, where where are we going in terms of the health of our nation and the health of our communities? Um, listen, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna discuss more about the the work that you're doing. So so uh, you know, if you're watching, I wanna I wanna tell you to stay with us. We've got an incredible. Uh, guest Steve Belcher. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more with Steve Belcher. This is our friend and colleague Donna. She has liver disease. She planned to present this message herself, but she can't because she's in the hospital. We can change this. We can help people like Donna remain active mothers, loving friends, and productive members of society, but we need to work together and contribute our part of the story to medical research. It's ironic because that's what Donna planned to talk about. People like you know what it's like firsthand when a doctor gives you a scary diagnosis. When that happens, you want to know all of your options. But the information online is overwhelming. That's why we've been working on a solution. Rather than struggling to find the researchers and support organizations focused on your condition, you make it possible for these professionals to find you instead. You simply answer a few questions about yourself and your health, and then you decide how much of that information you're willing to share, to whom, and for what purpose. Please join us at Registries for All, regforall.org. And welcome back. You're watching Small Business 21st Century in today's segment, of Build Your Difference with my special guest, author Steve L. Belcher, who's the founder and executive director of the Urban Kidney Alliance Incorporated. Now, prior to the break, Steve was telling us about his career-changing uh, accident, which caused him to, to leave his previous career where he was a, a medical nurse and, and focus now more on advocacy uh, in, in the kidney disease community. And what I want to know now is, you know, with, with so many of these uh, dialysis centers popping up in our communities all across the nation, the, I think the question in front of us is, can this disease be reversed? Steve, what say you on that question? Can, can, can kidney disease be reversed? Well, that's a complicated question. Um, I'm sorry, that's a complicated answer. Because if you catch it in time, see, kidney disease has five stages. Nine out of 10 people have stage three and don't even know it. So at that point, you can stop the progression. You can make, maybe even go back to stage two, but you cannot reverse the damage that is done. However, there is a condition called acute kidney failure or acute renal failure. Okay, the same thing. Uh, what that means is your kidney shut down temporarily and you may need some form of renal replacement therapy to let your kidneys rest and do the function that your kidneys were doing. Now in cases like, for instance, some type of trauma to the kidneys, maybe somebody say overdose and they shut down their kidneys. So they want to do dialysis until the kidneys come back or restore back to function. Okay. Now we don't know how much damage one has done to the structure unless you get a kidney biopsy. Okay. But once one gets to stage five, which is called end-stage renal disease, 
once the kidneys completely fail as evidenced by the lab work, the lab diagnostic, and the reduction of urine output and all other symptoms, there's no turning back. Mm. And if there was, Pierre, we would see hundreds of thousands of people not on dialysis. And see, one more thing i just like to point out. Not just diabetes and hypertension, which are the two leading causes of kidney failure, causes this disease. We got to think about genetic conditions. We got to think about lupus, sickle cell, HIV, all other medical conditions that can lead to kidney failure as well. Even something as simple as pain medication over the long term, like Motrin, something a lot of people are familiar with, can damage your kidneys in the long run. So, Steve, in, in, your, in your latest book, The Dialysis Patient Handbook of Information, is this some of the information that, that it's your goal to convey? Uh, tell me more about about what what people can discover in in this in this new book of yours. So in the second book, it I, I don't want to say it's a series from the first book, but it basically piggybacks off the first one. The first book is geared toward people who are about to start dialysis, maybe just started 30 days, two months, six months, even a year. And even veterans can learn something from my first book, maybe some information that was missed along their journey with kidney failure. But the second book goes deeper into everyday everyday processes or situations that occur during one's hemodialysis uh, journey, okay. whether it's infection control, whether it's traveling, whether it's trying to go back to work, whether it's emergency preparedness. And we know a lot of people have experienced natural disasters with these uh, tornadoes, and um, hurricanes down in Florida and contact with the recent tornadoes. And if you can't go to dialysis, then what? You, you can't go to the nearest hospital because other people are dealing with dialysis too are going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. So I put all this information in this second book so people, you know, if they go to a facility that's short of staff or um, they can't get questions answered in a timely manner, like if they want to travel, for instance, and there's no social worker because the social worker handles that. But if there's no social worker at that facility and it's being covered by another social worker, you got to remember that social worker is taking care of how many patients are at her clinic, now she has to take care of another load of patients that another social worker would have been doing. And so now that information may fall through the cracks. Got it. And this is, this is information that can, in, in some cases, be the difference between life and death, right? This is, this is life saving Absolutely. information. Wow. Okay, and, and, and you know what? I think that there's incredible value, and I think we have to remember that uh, when, when it comes to critical information like this, you gotta, you gotta have it in book form because you can't always rely on having a connection to the internet or having your cell phone connected to the internet where you can just get on Google. I think we take that for granted mm -hmm. sometimes that we just think, you know, oh, I'll just hop on myself. Yeah, but what happens what happens, like you said, when you're on vacation or if you're on a cruise or you're whatever, you know, you're traveling and, and you don't have access to the internet or you don't have your cell phone is, you know, you're on an airplane, the cell phone. There's just so many scenarios where certain things we need to have in paper 
on paper, and we need to have it with us at all times. And I think this, uh, this handbook of information is just absolutely critical. Um, Steve, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day, out of your busy schedule to join us on the show today and to shed some light, just a little bit, on the state of kidney disease in this country and exactly uh, why it is so critical for, for people who are dealing with this issue to go out and to make sure that they're well informed. And, and one way they can do that is by making sure they've read this incredible book that, that, you've, that you've written. Um, I want to say, you know, listen, it's that time again. Uh, we've covered a lot of information on today's show. If you have any questions about today's segment, I'm going to encourage you to see the information that's scrolling on the bottom of your screen. You've been watching Small Business 21st Century in today's segment of Build Your Difference with our special guest, Steve L. Belcher. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.